What's up guys, it's Alpine Sniper, and this is my comprehensive list on how not to be a noob in Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. One of the first things that I've noticed that people do when they get into Rising Storm, and they're usually coming from a battlefield or a Call of Duty, is that they sprint everywhere. And the problem with that is that there is a little bit of time that it takes to bring your weapon up in this game from a full sprint. It's not instant. And then when you do, if you've been sprinting for a while, there's going to be a lot of sway and there's going to be a lot of heavy breathing. And uh, as you'll see here, I'm sprinting instead of moving at a slower pace, so I wasn't ready for that guy. If you're a squad leader for the Vietnamese forces, you absolutely need to be building tunnels. If you're not building tunnels, then you're not doing your job. Um, don't build the tunnels out in the middle of the um, you know, battlefield. The helicopters and, and the enemy source, uh, soldiers are going to destroy them really quickly. You need to find a spot um, kind of away from the battlefield, hopefully in support of a point, like an objective point. And if you can, try and sneak it into um, some bushes and stuff like that so it's harder to spot. Um, or on the other side of a wall away from helicopters. Being a good squad leader means a few things. It means uh, being in a supporting role for the rest of your teammates, especially if you're on the U.S. forces, um, to be near an, uh, an objective point, um, not necessarily on the front lines. You want to give your teammates a good spawning point and um, you don't you need to be setting markers you need to be spotting and you need to um, essentially keep pressure off of your squad mates as they spawn in on you so that you guys can su successfully attack attack an objective point um, or if you're on the Vietnamese side you need to be setting good um, tunnels and getting into good defensive positions and not just hanging out on the edges the uh, U.S. Uh, squad leader also has a unique ability in that he can uh, set a marker for the team leader to bomb by throwing his purple smoke grenade. And uh, so basically you can get that smoke grenade into positions behind enemy lines that you wouldn't normally be able to get with just lines of sight. You can just toss the grenade back there at an angle um, that you wouldn't normally be able to mark for your team leader. I personally think that there's a bigger skill gap between guys that can get good at using single fire versus full auto as the single fire is just way more accurate and um, you can get follow-up shots more precise with single fire compared to full auto. However, full auto does have its advantages, obviously, in close quarters. So what I recommend is to set single fire as your default and then as you get into um, scenarios where you're inside buildings or tight um, uh, like corridors and, or tunnels and stuff like that and then switch over to full auto um, to help you clear out those locations. Another tip to help you survive is to basically if you find yourself in an open space like an open field or a clearing don't run in a straight line. Um, what you're going to want to do is actually to serpentine or zigzag. Um, you don't have to do a lot, it's just that it makes it way harder for a sniper or somebody at distance to be able to get a shot off on you. Basically, when you're around a lot of enemies, um, whether you're on the front lines or behind them, uh, behind the enemy, what you're going to want to do is stay crouched, crawling, um, or your normal, like I guess, like the jog pace. But the more you sprint, the more noise you make, and the more an enemy is going to be able to detect you um, 
and and find out your location and obviously kill you. This one is pretty self-explanatory. If you're a grunt on the US or on the Vietnamese side, stay away from the M14 and the SKS as the um, the AKs and the M16 are far superior basically in every way to the uh, single fire uh, alternatives. If you start the game out as a Vietnamese force, you need to lay down your traps as soon as the game starts. You don't necessarily have to keep laying them the rest of the game, um, but as you die or as the match starts, definitely put down at least your first trap. Um, it's easy way to get kills, and, you know, just put them in common uh, walking areas. And I'll pick up, you know, three, four, possibly five kills a game just by throwing down my trap as I'm on my way out of my spawn. Another thing to help you in this game is to pick clothing that is not necessarily the flashiest. You know, you may not look as cool um, and you don't get to show off your prestige or your rank, um, but to pick the more boring colored items, you'll hide better in the uh, foliage and 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 settings where you know the brighter colored and the um, uh, basically the the stuff that shows off your rank is more easily identifiable and it doesn't blend as well um, and is not as good a, of uh, camouflage, and so you know potentially it could stop you from going on a better kill streak because you're going to be spotted. One problem I see a lot of people get into is that they try to shoot at everything around them and what that ends up doing is giving them away and the enemy just mows them down. You don't have to take every shot that you come across, you know, if there's an obstacle like trees and stuff in the way, if you're not comfortable with the shot, then you don't need to take it. Um, you can see here, I kind of pick and choose my shots. Um, you know, you may still miss, but by taking your time and not rushing it, the enemy is going to have a harder time finding you, especially if you're behind enemy lines or, or you know, trying to hide from them in any kind of way. Um, and you'll see here, I actually pick up a collateral, um, just picking my shots. This is a pretty easy one, and most people, um, whether they do it or not, know that they should be doing it, and that's to put yourself in a position where the enemy can't come from a bunch of different angles, there's not a bunch of flanks. Um, if you're in a spot that you can get flanked in three different directions, you know, maybe you're better off moving to a spot that only has two. Um, you know, putting yourself in a better position, you know, higher ground compared to lower ground, it can make a difference between, you know, getting three kills or getting that one kill and getting immediately shot by the enemy team. Another thing that I see a lot is a bunch of people are kind of like sheep in this game as they, you know, they see the big uh, crowd of their team going to a specific objective or um, a point on the map and everybody's kind of fighting in this bottleneck um, when you could just kind of go to the flanks or the sides. It doesn't even have to be that far away, like everybody's fighting on uh, Charlie Point right here and I'm slightly off to the side and the enemy team is just kind of has no idea that I'm over here and I'm picking up you know five or six kills just by not being around where the crowd is
this goes back to being a good squad leader um, and a good squad leader for your team. Basically, you just need to be putting down um, quality markers for your uh, team leader to bomb. Try and put them, you know, on a contested point that you guys are having a hard time getting. Um, or if you see a stack of the enemy team kind of on one end of the point and your team's on the other, try to position your marker so that it's more on the side um, of the enemy team and not just kind of in the middle where you're going to get some team kills. One thing that I notice in this game is that compared to like a battlefield or whatever, people don't spot and they don't spot nearly as often as they need to. Um, you need to uh, put the key binding so that it's easily ac you know accessible so that you can shoot, you know, tag an enemy and continue moving all without, you know, kind of throwing off your um, gameplay and uh, aiming. You know, you want to you want to be able to smoothly get to that key binding. When in doubt, hit fire it out. Now, shooting and moving is very important. Um, you don't necessarily need to shoot and move across the map or make any huge amount of uh, relocation, but after you pop one or two guys, you know, move five yards, ten yards away from where you just were. People hear the gunshot and they'll see the flash of your muzzle and they'll look for you at that location and if you've moved just a little bit down, um, you can catch them, you know, basically just kind of staring at where you used to be and get an easy kill. Um, or you'll catch, you know, fire going to your old location and you'll be able to tag a couple more guys. There's pretty much only one way of getting behind enemy lines uh, currently on official maps, and that's as the Vietnamese forces. Um, now, unless you're playing on a custom map where the Vietnamese are attacking and the U.S. is defending, um, you're basically going to be limited to sneaking behind enemy lines as the NVA. Um, you know, but basically, if you want to be a very disruptive. Um, enemy force, you're going to need one or two guys um, that can hang back after, you know, the objectives have been captured and kind of tag the other team in their spawn. I mean, it's, you know, it's not a very uh, nice thing to do, but it disrupts the enemy team way more than you could ever know. I mean, if, if guys are spawning and instead of running for an objective, they're turning around and trying to find you hidden somewhere in their spawn. Um, they're wasting resources, they're wasting time, they're wasting effort looking for one guy that could be anywhere instead of rushing the points and continuing their attack. A real quick point here is that if you're hiding behind enemy lines or, um, you know, sneaking around, one of the easiest ways to go undetected is to pick up an enemy weapon and actually use that against them. Because um, most people can identify the type of guns that are being shot. Um, you know, the difference between the AK and the M16 is pretty obvious. Uh, and if you're using one of their weapons, they're not going to notice that and they're not going to start looking for, you know, wherever that AK behind them is coming from. And this kind of goes back to 
my point being about not shooting at everything. Um, and this, you know, applies a lot to a sniper is because you're kind of beginning, going to be off to the side of a map um, or further away from your targets. Don't shoot too often. Um, you know, space out your shots because if you sit there and you pop off 10 shots in a row, um, it's going to alert the enemy team or the guys that you're shooting at and they're going to turn to where the indicators are coming from and they'll be able to find you a lot easier than if you're kind of slowly taking pot shots. If you're a team leader and you don't have a mic, um, you're really doing your team a disservice. Uh, there's a lot of information that needs to come across quickly um, and not a lot of time for people to read at the bottom of their screen if you're typing it out or not communicating at all. Um, people need to know, you know where a bombing run is coming in, what points to attack, uh, where enemy locations are because you're going to be staring at a map a lot longer than they are. Um, and by not having a mic, you're not going to be able to do that efficiently. One thing that I see a lot of new commanders doing is spawning people in the back of the map where they've got the radio. Those commanders actually need to be up towards, you know, if you're going to do the ambush deployment, they need to be pushed up towards one of the objectives and do the ambush deployment there. Um, another thing, you don't need a radio to do the ambush deployment. You can actually run away from the radio, go up to the objective, hit that ambush deployment, and then head back after you've dropped off you know, everybody at the objective. This is one of the biggest things that I see a bad commander basically doing, and that's not understanding the area of effect between you know, the Vietnamese and the US arty strikes. Uh, the Vietnamese already strike has a way bigger and less accurate strike than the U.S. one. The U.S. one is very concentrated um, and doesn't have as big an area um, and also comes in waves. So you just really need to be a lot more cautious with the Vietnamese already strike. Um, if you notice that your already is off and you're killing teammates, and your teammates are pushing and you made a bad call, you need to cancel that already and not just let it go. This ties in um, with some of the other points that I've made earlier and that's Movement gives you away, um, especially in this game where, you know, one bullet matters. Um, if you sit still and the enemy is moving, you're going to spot them every time. Um, the same goes for them. If you're moving and they're sitting still, they're going to spot you. So it's kind of a cat and mouse there. This is actually one of my biggest peeves, and it's the guys that are using the rolls that have smoke equipped, and you guys are trying to push a point, and your team can't capture it, and those guys that have the smokes aren't using them to attack. I mean, you should be using smokes regardless. It's It makes crossing streets and open areas so much better, and it makes it so that you lose so many less guys. Um, taking a point. I mean, there's no reason not to use them. And if you're going to take a roll that has the smokes, um, you need to use those smokes. And even if you're a squad leader, you can throw the purple one to kind of mask your position. And hopefully, you know, you don't want the team leader to use that mark. But um, if you need to, definitely use it. Uh, a lot of this game especially on the uh, territories mode, and not so much on the supremacy, but definitely territories. You've got one team spawning on one end and one team spawning on the other. So you generally know where the other team's coming from, and you know where a lot of the choke points and stuff are. You need to be throwing your grenades into them, and you're probably going to pick up a kill or two. Um, just make sure that your teammates haven't pushed up too far into that area either. 
And this ties into using your grenades, um, the commanders calling in arties, all that stuff. You need to pull up your maps. Uh, you need, if, if you don't, you know, for nothing else, check to see where your teammates are. Um, if there's a recon up, use that to spot enemies. Like there, there's no reason for people to not have a general idea of where their teammates are at. Um, it would limit a lot more of the team killing that's going on. Um, and there's it, the map just provides so much information in so short amount of time. All it takes is a button press and just more people need to be doing it. I actually see this a lot and it kind of confuses me, um, but guys see tunnels and I don't know if it's because they're new or what, but they don't destroy them. They don't take the time to chuck a grenade or, you know, hold the interact button to blow those up. There, there's such a tactical disadvantage for leaving those up and waiting for someone else to do it. This kind of goes in line with blowing up tunnels. Um, Helicopters are essentially the tunnels for the Americans, and the Vietnamese forces have weapons that are capable of dealing with them. Um, for guys to just kind of let transport helos, you know, kind of go by unopposed, or the um, or the little attack choppers and the, the cobras to go by without taking little pod shots at them. Um, it kind of, you know, unless unless you're going to give away your position, then don't do it. But if you're kind of towards the back of the map or, you know, on your way to a location, you really need to be taking those pot shots. I mean, the AK's bullets especially and, the, you know, the RPDs, they, they really pierce that armor and get in there. You can pick up, you know, two or three kills or even potentially, you know, hit the pilot himself. On the reverse side, if you're a transport helicopter pilot, you need to be landing, if you've got passengers, you need to land those things. You don't need to be flying around in circles and trying to find, you know, the absolute perfect spot. If you're floating around the battlefield, you know, and hovering while you've got a, you know, um, a, you know, essentially four or five guys riding in there, you're just sitting ducks. Like, land those choppers, you know, they don't have to be a perfect spot, you know, just get them close, land them and then take off again. You don't need to be just hovering because what's what's going to happen is you're going to get picked off by just small arms fire or um, rockets coming in or the dishka. This map really just pisses me off a lot of the times because what ends up happening is, is like two thirds of both teams end up fighting over Charlie. The Charlie point in this map is completely useless if either team figures out to either attack Echo as the Vietnamese or to attack Bravo um, as the Americans. Um, Charlie is just such a clusterfuck that there's really no reason to be there, and it's completely negated once a you know Char once um, uh, Echo or Bravo are taken. So most people figure this out pretty quickly, and that's that RPGs have backblast. Um, if you have the RPG, don't go into a tiny room with a bunch of teammates and shoot it. You're going to kill a bunch of your guys, and that goes for your team. You know, if you're the guy that doesn't have it, don't run behind the guy with the RPG because you're just going to eat shit. Um, so just stay away from guys with RPGs. One last thing before I let y'all go, um, if you ever find yourself stuck on the map somewhere, um, you can suicide and get out of it by hitting the tilde key, um, which is underneath your escape button a lot of the times on the left hand side, then type suicide and then hit enter. And what that'll do is um, basically it'll kill you. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good one.